Hello and welcome to another video by the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, I will be doing an unboxing and review of a mini camera for the Raspberry Pi by SM Raza. Inside the box, you will find a note card with a few notes about the camera. You will also find the camera module, a 15 pin ribbon cable attached to the module, which is used for connecting to a Raspberry Pi 3, 3B, 3B Plus, or Pi 2 Model B. The box also includes an FPC cable that can be used to connect to a Pi Zero. The lens comes with a lens cover, which is a nice touch. At the end of the video, I will go over how to swap out the 15 pin ribbon cable with the FPC cable if it is required. The camera features an OV5647 sensor, which records at 1080p with a 160 degree viewing angle and adjustable lens. For this project, I will be using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus in a multi layer case that also happens to be from SM Raza. I really like the case. Um, I did make a few adjustments to it. I did add a mini fan guard to the top, which is going to add a little extra protection to the fans so that way nothing gets stuck in there. You don't get your finger in there and get hurt. I also added a couple rubber feet to the bottom. This just kind of makes it more stable on a desk and the bottom screws aren't going to scratch anything. For this case, you have to remove the four corner screws. I recommend flipping the screws around so they go from the bottom up to keep the layers together. Once the screws are undone, the top levels need to be removed. It would make it a lot easier to unplug the fan from the Pi itself, but I like making my life difficult, so I think I'm going to leave it attached for now. The camera ribbon has two sides, a blue side and a side with silver contacts. The cable has to be installed in a specific direction, otherwise the camera will not be detected. For the camera to function, the silver contacts must face the HDMI port on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. For this case, you have to slide the camera ribbon through the multiple layers of the case and then attach the camera ribbon itself to the board. Again, you will want to make sure that the silver contacts are pointing towards the HDMI port. To insert the ribbon, you need to open the camera port by applying a little pressure on both sides of the tab and pull up gently and away from the port towards the USB ports. Once the cable is inserted, make sure to compress the camera port clip back down. Give a gentle tug on the cable to make sure it's properly seated into the port. Once the cable is inserted, it's time to put the case back together. You just need to gently place the layers back together over the upside down screws and then screw the layers together. For this multi-layer case, I will be using the same method of leaving the screws in upside down as I replace one at a time. Make sure to be careful of the camera ribbon while putting everything back together. After everything is back together, we can power on the Raspberry Pi and begin setup. For this video, I am using VNC to remotely view the desktop of the Pi. Keep that in mind when we get to the live video streaming section, as we will probably see some lag in the video. The first thing we want to do is to update the Pi. To do this, you will run sudo apt get update as well as sudo apt get upgrade. For this Raspberry Pi, I have not updated in a while, which equated to roughly 35 minutes of updates. Luckily, it's 2019 and we have the technology to fast forward those long painstaking minutes into a few short seconds for you. After all the updates are done, it's time to enable the camera interface on your Raspberry Pi. There are two ways to do this. The first way is through the menu on the GUI. To do this, click on the menu and mouse over preferences and click on Raspberry Pi configuration. This will open a menu. This menu allows you to change multiple system and interface settings such as the name of the device, password, or enable VNC. From here, click on the Interfaces tab and then enable the camera and save the configuration. Saving from here will require a reboot. The second way is through the terminal. To do this, open a terminal session and type sudo raspi config. This will open a similar menu. Key down to Interfaces and press Enter. This will open the Interfaces subinterface. Here you will key down to the camera option and select it to enable it. Once enabled, enabled back to the main menu and key over to finish. This will save the settings and also reboot the Pi. Now that everything is set up, it's time for the fun. To take a photo, you will use the raspi still command. As you can see, the command has a lot of arguments that can be used for different settings while taking a photo. For testing, I am just going to output it to a file called image1 with the lens going for 4 seconds. The exact commands used can be found in the description below. Once the photo is taken, you can go ahead and open it. 
Make sure to remove the lens cap before trying to use your camera, otherwise you're gonna get a blank screen. Okay, so with the lens cap removed, let's try again. Okay, so this time it worked. Uh, looks like I'm definitely gonna have to adjust the lens into focus. So to do this, I'm going to do a live stream so that way I can just accurately adjust the focus without having to take multiple photos or videos trying to guess how to focus it. To accomplish this, I will be using VLC. VLC has media streaming capabilities built in and are pretty good. And I already have VLC player on my PC, so just the easiest for me to do. To install VLC on the Raspberry Pi, use the command sudo apt-get install VLC and let it run. Once installed, you will use raspi-vid to create an HTTP stream that can be viewed on a remote PC using VLC. Raspi-vid is similar to Raspi still in that it allows for a large number of arguments, but instead of picture captures, it's going to be for video. To create the stream, you are going to use the following command, which will be in the description below. It is far as too long to try to even say. Once you push enter, it will start a live stream that can be viewed over HTTP port using 9001 in this case. To view the stream within VLC player, you will click on media and then click on open network stream, which will open a new window. Here you will enter the network URL. For this stream, we are using HTTP, so we will put that at the front of the URL followed by the IP address of the Pi and end it with the port reset in the previous command. After everything is entered, you can hit play and the stream will start. Depending on your network connectivity, it may take a few moments to buffer. Keep in mind, I'm using Powerline Ethernet, so throughput is pretty low for this instance and will probably cause some lag while we're viewing it remotely. Okay, so once the stream is started, we can make adjustments to the focus of the lens. To do this, you just have to rotate the lens either clockwise or counterclockwise until the picture is in focus. Now I will suggest using a monitor plugged into the Pi directly to make the focus as accurate as possible, but for what I'm doing right now, this is fine. You may have to fiddle with the lens a little to get it into focus, and keep in mind that depending on the project you're using the camera module for, you may have to readjust the lens focus once it's in its final location. While reading the reviews for this product, I did notice a few reviews that stuck out, and one was that the red LED on the front of the module was very bright when the camera was in use. I would agree it's pretty bright. If you plan to use this for a security camera, then depending on what you're looking for out of that camera, the red LED could be an issue. Some electrical tape over the LED should fix that, however, but just keep that in mind if you're going to purchase this module. Another review that stuck out was that the camera module got pretty hot over very little use. I let it run for roughly 20 minutes and did not notice anything tangible from a heat standpoint coming from the module. I let it run, I touched my hand to it, and I didn't, it didn't even feel warm to me. It felt room temperature. So I don't know if maybe they got a bad module or, or what, but I, I didn't notice that issue. One thing I did notice though, was that for the, the video stream and the photos, um, it, it seems a bit dark, at least to me. I do believe this is just a lack of lighting and most likely some of the settings within the Raspi vid and Raspi still commands. I, I still gotta learn how to use them, but do keep that in mind, as light sensitivity could be a major factor depending on the project you're looking to do. There are camera modules out there that have built-in night vision. I haven't tested any of those yet, but they are out there that's what you're looking for. Okay, so to change out the cable, you're going to pull the tabs off the bottom of the module up and away, very similar to how you do on the Raspberry Pi itself, and then you pull the cable out. You're then going to take your PFC cable and you're going to plug it into the slot on the module. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the connectors are facing down towards the board And then once the cable's inside the module, you go ahead and close the clip down and then just want to give your cable a slight tug to make sure it's seated in there properly. But that's all you have to do. That's it for this video. If you liked what you saw, please give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. Don't forget to check out the description below for all the commands used in this video, along with any relevant links for the different things I show or used. I would also love to hear about any upcoming Raspberry Pi projects or something you made recently that you really enjoyed doing, so make sure to let me know in the comments below. Also make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the new tech and gadget videos that will be coming out real soon. Thank you for watching.